we're going to show you a mock safety inspection today, but before we do that, we need to know why we're going to do an inspection. You have basic OSHA regulations such as companies must meet the following requirements. You must minimize workplace hazards. You know, must warn employees of potential hazards. You must provide safe tools and equipment to your workers. You must teach the proper use of personal protective equipment. Now OSHA's four-point plan to help businesses develop their own safety program are to provide for management leadership and employee involvement. You need to have a workplace analysis. That's what we're going to see today, just how to do a workplace analysis. You also need to have hazard prevention and control. You need to have safety and health training. And all your training needs to be written and you need to keep that in your file. This is how to conduct a work site analysis for safety, part two of OSHA's four point plan. This is a physical inspection of the work site premises looking for potential hazards. Such things that, that you need to look for are damaged equipment such as rickety ladders with loose or missing parts if you use ladders in your business, litter and debris scattered in the work area in travel paths or on steps that would tend to be a tripping hazard fire extinguishers for proper class of fire and pressure gauge for charge. Equipment shields, damaged or missing. You need to look at all of your equipment to make sure that the shields are not missing and they're not damaged. First aid kits located where expected and fully stocked. Rule violations such as smoking in no smoking areas need to be noted in this self safety inspection. Personal protective equipment violations, such as employees not wearing their work gloves or their eye protection or ear protection if they're around loud equipment using that. Now all safety equipment required for application of restricted use pesticides if used needs to be checked and you need to have a list of what you have in an inventory. Talk to employees and ask about prior injuries and near misses and note any that may have occurred. Inspections should be conducted every three to six months. I think if you did your inspections once every four months, you'd be within that range and I think that would be acceptable by OSHA. Now once a hazard is found, make a written action plan to correct the problem. The plan should contain the following information what the hazard was, how it's going to be corrected, your target completion date to get that done, and the person responsible, whoever has done this inspection. Add the actual completion date when it is done and the person that approved the correction with that signature or initials in place. All this information is kept on file and is a part of OSHA's record keeping requirement. Now let's take a look at a form that I have put together. It is not complete. I can't put down all the equipment for all businesses out there, but it gives you an example of how you can make your own form and it makes it easier during your inspections. This is page one of four pages of the form. And it tells you that Part two, Occupational Safety and Health Administration's four point plan that we just talked about details what you need to look for and this forms helps you to keep up with what you inspected and what you found. And this is the actual form itself, part of it, one page of it. Has the date of inspection, address of inspection, on-site safety inspection for the name of the company, the equipment, that you inspect, the fire extinguishers, the missing safety shields if you found any, and first aid kits. The second part of the form lists rule violations. If anyone has violated any of your safety rules, such as smoking in an area that is designated for non-smoking, you must write that down and talk to that person and tell them that they need to not do that. Personal protective equipment, any violations in there would be listed. Safety equipment used to apply restricted use pesticides. 
that is a little bit different from just uh, work gloves and things like that. A lot of times you have rubber gloves or uh, neoprene gloves that you must wear. You must uh, note if any of those are torn or, or not working the way they should. And any prior injuries and near misses reported by the employees is also a spot that you can put that down. Action plan for correcting hazards listed on page two and three above. This form tells you what hazards you found, corrective measures that you will take, target completion date, and the person responsible. Just like OSHA says, you must do that. You must keep that on file. If they come in, let me see your safety inspection data. You must show them these things. And now to the actual mock safety inspection. Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Jesse LaPrad. I work for Alabama Cooperative Extension System and Auburn University. I do farm and agricultural safety including the green industry, landscape maintenance, and landscaping in Alabama. Now today we're going to do a mock-up, not a real one, but a mock-up of how to look at your equipment and look for any kind of safety infractions they may have. Anything that's unsafe, you need to write it down, keep it on file, you need to, to make sure it's corrected, and that you will do according to OSHA directions. You can get all of OSHA law and all of their requirements at our website that you see on the screen right now. Hello, I'm John Bala with Auburn University Landscape Department. Facilities Management. Uh, today we're going to give you a walking tour of uh, how we do our safety inspection here at Auburn. One thing we like to check here at Auburn is the uh, fire extinguishers. I'll just check the tag, make sure it's up to date, uh, make sure it's charged in the green. If it's not, we'll contact the contractor to get it recharged up to date. Here at Auburn, each supervisor is required to keep a first aid kit for each crew. Uh, here at the shop, we have this one. It's got basic things like eye wash, some sting relief, iPad, cold compress, among other things. Uh, these are just for minor injuries. Anything more severe, we'll send to the emergency room. Throughout the workday, a lot of equipment is brought into the shop for repairs. We do everything we can to keep everything off the floor, free of tripping hazards. So people that come into the shop don't trip, or while we're working on equipment, we don't trip or injure ourselves. We're going to conduct a pre-operation safety inspection of our zero-turn mower. Uh, most newer zero-turn mowers are equipped with rollover protection, also known as ROPS. Um, when this is up, you want to make sure both sides are properly pinned. Also, if you have your ROPS engaged and up, you're going to want to wear your seatbelt while operating, make sure that it's properly working. Um, also, you want to make sure that any um, other safety features are in good working condition, such as your side chute over on the right side there. Um, these mowers are also equipped with safety cutoffs. Um, when, the, when the operator exits the mower, if the blades are engaged or the parking brake is not engaged, the mower will shut off. Um, or if the blade is engaged and the parking brake is up and the mower, operator exits the mower, it will also cut off. One example of equipment that we like to inspect is our auger bit. Uh, you'll see we always make sure that this area here has some thread. If it's worn down completely, it won't dig into the ground. Uh, if it does get worn out completely, it's easily replaced by just taking this bolt out, putting a new one in. Another part we like to check is the teeth. On this part, they'll get worn down. If they get worn down too much, it'll start wearing the auger bit itself out. And the, if that happens, then the whole piece needs to be replaced. Here we've got some small equipment that's used in landscape maintenance. We've got a couple of string trimmers, and we've also got a curb edger. A couple of safety features that you're going to want to look at with your string trimmers is that make sure that your guard up here around the head is in good condition so that it can stop any thrown objects. You're also going to want to make sure that your cutoff here at the throttle is in good working condition. Uh, we've got a string trimmer here that the guard is in bad condition and needs to be replaced. This trimmer also has some loose wiring around the cutoff and this need this piece of equipment needs to be taken out of service. We've also got a curb edger here 
For the curb edger, you're going to want to make sure that this flap here is in good condition, as well as your cutoff up here near the throttle. Here we've got a push mower that's got some safety issues. The cable here on the safety cutoff at the handle is broken. It also has some damage down here to the discharge flap or the cover. Um, the spring is broken. This mower needs to be taken out of service until it's repaired.